Hi guys, Paul here, and we're going to be running through the third part in this series on the NACE32 flight controller, FreeSky D4R2, and also the Tyrannus integration. So what we're going to do now is actually run through the radio. There's some housekeeping we need to do on the radio, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Welcome to OpenTX. Now what you're looking at there is my CGX250 um, settings that I've got on my uh, radio. As you can see, as soon as I put the throttle on, it'll start counting backwards, etc. So it's got a few things like that. I've also got my three position, three position switch set up. So in the top position, it's running in uh, acro mode. In the middle position, it is in level mode. And in the lower position, it'll actually engage the lost model alarm on the NAS32. So what we'll do, we'll go through the basic housekeeping as far as the radio goes. First thing we'll do is set up a brand new model. So what we'll do is go down to a blank spot. I'll put, make it number 10 for argument's sakes. And I'll hold the enter key and I'll select create a new model. So what that'll do is bring up this menu and you can go through and follow the prompts if you like. But for now, what we're going to do is do is completely manually so you understand exactly what it is that the radio is doing or what we need to do. Now, keep an eye in the description. I'm sure someone's going to point out that I can do things a lot better way, but I want to show you exactly how I've gone about doing this. So I'll press exit. And um, as you can see, it's created model uh, 10. Now, the first thing I want to do before I actually go through and change any settings on that model is I want to go to the main menu or the main settings for this radio. Hold this down for about a second. And we're in page one of eight. I'm going to press the up arrow key and go to the bottom. Now, the first thing we're looking at is the mode. And I'm running mode one. So basically what that means is on my stick movements, we've got um, rudder, elevator, throttle and we've got aileron so you'll set this up as per whatever it is that your radio is most people are going to be flying mode 2 anyway so um keep that in mind so make sure that is set correctly now the other important thing you need to get right is this here this is the default channel order now what this is telling it is um each one of these letters represents uh channel one on the receiver channel two on the receiver channel three and channel four so what this is saying is my receiver is actually set up for, um, I'll get out of that again so it doesn't go dim. So what it's saying is basically I am running, uh, the first channel is going to be aileron, the second channel is going to be elevator, the third channel is going to be throttle, and the final channel will be rudder. So you need to make sure that this is set up correctly because you're going to also apply this setting in the flight controller itself. This is in base flight. So keep that in mind. You want to get that right. Otherwise, it just creates a little bit of confusion in terms of which channel is which. So we'll exit out of this now. And what we'll do, we'll just press this once, the menu. What we'll do, we're already on the model, I've already selected the model, so all I need to do now is just press page. So the first thing we want to do is name it. Uh, and that's pretty straightforward. You might want to skip this bit if you already know how to do this. So I'll hold this enter down, it'll change to capital. And we'll go to G. and I can press exit out of that, that's fine. Model image, you can select whatever image you like and later on I will do a video on how to create your own images. So press the enter and select the one you want. In this case, I'll suggest select CGX250. Now CGX250 won't be there, but I'll probably make that available as a download um, with all the audio files that I've created for this radio. So enter. So that there is actually created the model. So I'll exit out of that just to show you exactly what it's done. So there you go, we've got CGX250 and that's pretty much good to go. Uh, as you can see, we've got no timer on this at the moment. So what we need to do now is just press the menu button and then we'll press the page button to go into page two. And we wanna make some setting changes here. First thing we'll do is change the timer and we'll go to this and what we'll do is change that to and this is just making a countdown timer and i usually run it for about six minutes that's usually pretty good so six minutes and what i'll do is i'll scroll down here countdown i don't want it to be silent i actually want it to be voice oops voice so what that'll do is that 30 seconds it'll say i've got 30 seconds to go 
and then it'll say 20 seconds and at 10 seconds it'll go 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 so that's pretty much done that and what we can do now is exit out of that so that's page one done sorry page two that was page three won't worry about we're not playing around with hellies at the moment flight modes we won't worry about and as you can see, what it's done is actually set up my channels for me already. Channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's good to go. And what we'll do is go to the next page. And over here, what, what I want to do is set up this three position switch, this one here. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward to do. So what we'll do now is scroll down and channel 5 will make that our three position switch for the flight modes. Press the enter and we've gone into it. Now you can name this whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to probably, I'll, I'll give it a quick name. I'll call it mode. Mode. And then what I'll do is I'll come down to, oops, exit. What I'll do is come down to the source and what I'll do is press enter and then once I've pressed enter I'll just flick the switch up and down and that's already selected uh, switch C. So that's pretty much done. I can exit out of that and as you can see it's named it mode. Now over here is where we can do some um, changing uh, reverses and etc. We won't touch bases on this just yet. Won't worry about curves. All global variable, variables. Um, logic switches, we will use these shortly and I'll explain exactly how they'll work. So what we'll do, we'll create a couple of logic switches and it's basically for warnings as far as the uh, battery cells go and it's pretty straightforward to do. Enter and we'll put the first function in and this will make sense exactly why I'm doing this a little later on. We'll go A is less than X and what we'll do is go to this one and we'll call that, we'll select, I always have trouble finding this one. Drive this a fair way up. Okay, we want cells. Okay, and what we want to do is make this the first warning and we'll change the voltage to say go 10.2 or thereabouts. And you can obviously adjust this to whatever it is that you want. So this is a logic switch that we'll refer to later on and we'll make it do something. In this case it'll actually um, verbally tell you that the voltage is low. And we can exit out of that. I'll actually zoom in a bit closer. That's probably a little bit better. So we'll do switch 2 now. This is logic switch 2. Enter. And we'll do exactly the same thing again. We'll go A is less than X. And X will be the cell value. And we'll go up. Cells, we finally found it. Enter and we'll make the voltage for this one say 10 volts. So basically what we're going to do if A is less than, um, if, if the cell voltage is less than uh, 10 point, uh, two volts, we'll get our first warning and then if it's less than 10 volts we'll get the critical warning and that's good. We'll exit out of that. Oops, too far. If you hold the page button down, you'll go backwards in the menu. So we're at page um, 1 of 12. If we hold this down, we've gone to 12 of 12. Hold it down one more time. And it's gone back to our special functions. And this is where we can actually program special functions in and make it actually say things and do things. So what we want to do, um, I'll go back one more. Keep in mind we've got L1 is going to be our initial battery warning 
and L2 will be our critical warning. So L2 is the critical warning. We've got to just keep that in mind. So I press the page button once and we'll do function one and we'll go we'll go L1 so that's our logic switch one we want it to do something in this instance we will click this and we we'll want it to actually play a track which is just an audio file play a track and what we want is I think it's called battery warning battery warning there you go so that'll play it once it'll let you know there's a battery warning uh, battery voltage low or something like that I can't remember exactly what it says and we'll exit out of that come down for the next one now this is log, um, switch number two and hold the enter down and go to L2 <coughs> L2 and once again we'll play a track play track and we'll select battery critical so that's our audible warnings as far as the battery goes etc so they're done can escape out of there so that's our first two audio files done. We'll do some more a little bit later on, but I'll touch bases on those later. So what we'll do in the next part of this video series is jump straight into the base flight controller and how to go about setting that up. And uh, that might be a little bit longer than this video, but hopefully I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Anyway, look, I hope you enjoy that. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. Catch you guys later.